everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another Ask Care Live studio session. My name is Joan and pronouns are she and her and I'm a student recruitment officer with Memorial. I myself did some studies at MUN as well. I was a psychology student in my undergraduate degree and then I went on to do counseling psychology. And today we have with us Cheryl Kiao and Rowan Meany from the faculty of engineering who are here to answer all your questions about our undergraduate programs in their faculty. But before we get started, I just have a couple of housekeeping items to mention. So first off, this session is being recorded. So just so that you know, you're, if you're participating, you're consenting to that. Your mics are muted and your camera's turned off, so you're only going to see our panelists here today. But if you do have a question, then please use the question and answer feature to all panelists that's within the WebEx platform. The main reason we're here today is to get all your questions taken care of, so feel free to use that as much as you need to. And today's focus, of course, is the Faculty of Engineering, so try and keep um, all of our questions related to them. If you do have a question we don't get to, don't worry, we'll send you a direct message in the chat. So to get us started, Cheryl and Rowan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your roles within the Faculty of Engineering? I'm going to start with Cheryl, if you will. Hi, everybody. So my name is Cheryl Keo, as Joan said, and I am the Student Liaison Officer for the Faculty of Engineering. Um, I've been with engineering now for just over 10 years, so quite a while. Um, but as a student liaison officer, I do some recruitment work, some retention work, a lot of work with students on campus, and a lot of advising with the first year program. So in your first year, everyone takes a common first year, and so the undergraduate office supports you through that. I am a Memorial graduate. I do have my undergraduate in linguistics and psychology, and I have a master's as well in student services. So um, Memorial is near and dear to my heart, and uh, the engineering program is in there now too since uh, I've been with them for so long. So nice to meet all of you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Cheryl and Rowan. Yeah, hey everyone, I am Rowan Meany. Uh, I'm in the fourth or fifth year of the engineering program. It's hard to kind of distinguish which one's which, but to give a better context, there's eight semesters, like school semesters, um, and I'm starting my eighth one in January, so I'll be done in May. Um, I grew up in St. John's my kind of entire life, right from zero years old to now. Um, and while I've been with the program, I've been pretty involved from like an extra extracurricular standpoint. So I was involved with Paradigm Hyperloop, uh, where I led the team down to California for Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX Hyperloop competition. Um, and I was also the vice president of external relationships with the MUN Engineering Society. And in that role, I basically manage relationships with engineering faculties all across Canada and also over 20 companies in the Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, the other thing with the engineering program at MUN is that we get to do a bunch of work terms slash internships, whatever you want to call them. Um, and basically while I've had the opportunity to do six, and I've done some in oil and gas, some others in manufacturing, entrepreneurship. I've built some drones. I've worked with autonomous cars and electric vehicles, and most recently, medical technology. Um, the, kind of the most two exciting that get people excited is uh, I worked in San Francisco last term at a company called Cruise, making autonomous self-driving electric cars, and now I'm at a medical startup in town called Breeze Suite. Super exciting. Well, thank you both for joining us today. So to get us started again, that Q&A feature is how you folks can submit your questions. Looks like we already have one that came in and it's for Cheryl. Could you tell us a little bit about the different majors that are offered within the Faculty of Engineering? Sure. So um, everyone comes in, it is a five-year program, but everyone comes in and takes a general first year. So the first year is called Engineering One, and during you'll take like engineering fundamental courses. So you'll take some math, some chemistry, some physics, and English, and then four specific um, engineering courses. And so that gets you kind of an introduction to the majors and the programs that we offer. Um, but in your at the end of your first year, you would rate your choices in major for the second year. And so we do have six majors that you can choose from. There's civil, computer, electrical, mechanical, 
ocean and naval architectural and process. And so you would start that in the first semester of your second year, which is called term three. And um, you would do that from term three until you graduate. So for the first little bit, it's pretty consistent. And then you choose your majors after that first year. Correct. Awesome. All right, our next question is for Rowan. What does a day in the life of an engineering student look like? Specifically, can you tell us a little bit about how the class schedule works and, and what have you, I guess, more so focused on first year and what that was like? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my first semester and second semester had five courses uh, in both. Some people, based off the math and kind of things you do in high school, you may have six one semester. Um, but what that looks like is you're essentially in the engineering building from uh, kind of eight or nine in the morning up until three or four in the afternoon. You have a few hour breaks throughout the day um, that kind of just go along with your schedule, like I guess kind of any program. Uh, but the really cool thing specifically about engineering is that when you do, you have chemistry labs, or you have chemistry, and along with chemistry, you have all the labs, so you get to be really hands on. Same thing goes for the physics labs that you do, um, but the really cool ones I like are the engineering specific labs. Uh, so you get to a bit of an introduction to programming, so you get to go up to the computer lab, play with some robots, um, write some code for them, make them do some stuff. You get to take apart a lawnmower, look at all the parts that put it together in some other labs. Uh, you get to play with circuits and basically like have those do certain functions, measure a bunch of things. Um, so the really great thing about first year specifically, I guess, on top of normal stuff that everyone's student faces is the additional hands-on experience you get in almost half your courses that you take. That's really exciting. Sounds like a lot of, a lot of fun in those labs, hey? Yeah, they're super fun. They're a lot of work, but you definitely learn a whole lot, which is the most exciting part. Right out of the gate in your first year, that's for sure. Awesome. All right, so our next question is also for Rowan. A uh, student would like to know how you keep yourself organized when you're studying. Yeah, so this is a this is a really tough one, and everyone's going to be a little bit different. Uh, so I take what I have to say with a grain of salt, and what everyone has to say with a grain of salt, and find something that works for you. Um, I know for me, in my first year, I was to be honest, all over the place. Um, but as you kind of go through and what you learn, um, for me, my big one was Google Calendar. So at the beginning of every semester, I go through the syllabus, the profs hand out, um, and basically put everything in a Google Calendar. So if I a test, I'll walk it that day. If I have a test on this day, I have an assignment this day, lab due this day. Um, and that way you can go to Google Calendar, you can see like your day view, so like what classes you have that day along with what assignments you have due that day. You can like turn it into like a week view or a month view and you can see all the different deadlines and you can start to plan your schedule really easily. Um, May, you may not use Google Calendar, but like Apple Calendars, kind of all those apps are along the same lines. Um, but I also have a few friends that use planners, so they actually write stuff down. But it's the same thing. You're looking at it in one big schedule, whatever format you want to do that. It's usually the most popular way, I'll say. Yeah, as many notifications as you can have. Hey, telling you when those deadlines are. Awesome. All right. So our next question is actually probably for Cheryl. Um, a student's wondering, what does their average need to be to get into the faculty? So engineering is a competitive faculty, so um, we are looking for um, students that have a strong foundation in um, advanced math or math chemistry, physics, and English. So typically we're looking for students who have 80% or better in those areas by North America standards. And um, the faculty, or sorry, the admission committee will look at those course areas individually as well as as a whole. Um, so say if you were missing the chemistry, you could still get accepted without the chemistry, or if you had the chemistry but you're missing the physics. Um, you know, there are still ways into the faculty. It just changes your first year programming slightly. So, um, but the thing is too with our admission process is that because students are applying lots of times early in their senior year, um, we will only look at final grades and so lots of times that's the final grades out of grade 11 um, because that's what's available at the time that your application is being processed. 
And so at that point, you'll either be offered admission, you'll be put on hold to see sort of what happens in your grade 12 final year, or you would um, unfortunately get a no. But there are still ways into the faculty if you don't get accepted directly out of high school. Okay, and just as a follow up to that, um, another person's wondering what courses they need to take in high school in order to get in. I think you touched on that a little bit, but just to clarify. Sure. So they're looking specifically at it um, by North American standards. They're looking for advanced math um, because we have the advanced or the academic. So the academic math will not get you in directly. You have to be able to uh, access math 1000 in your first year, which is a calculus class. And so if you can't access that directly from the program that you're taking in high school, then engineering would um, not accept you directly. So advanced math, they're looking for senior level chemistry, so second level or third year chemistry. Um, they're looking for physics, same thing. They're looking for senior level physics and they're looking for English. Okay, that's great. And another question from a student, I think this is also for Cheryl. Um, they just received their offer for a Bachelor of Science and they want to shift to mechanical engineering. So they're wondering if they enroll in January, will they be able to take their required courses on time with any sort of without any sort of break between semesters? So, um, if you've been accepted into science, you can access seven of the engineering courses. Um, the only, there are 11, but the only ones you won't be able to access are the four specific engineering. So, you have to be accepted into engineering in order to access those. Um, so, getting accepted in January, um, or starting, I should say, in January, um, that means you have to take 11 courses in the winter slash spring semester. So that would mean you have to have a, a one semester where you're taking six courses, which can be a lot, especially in the online format that we're currently in. Um, but it is possible because all four of those engineering courses are offered in the spring semester without conflict. Um, but you just have to get accepted into engineering before you can access them. So you would be able to take from outside of the faculty, you would be able to start your math, do your chemistry, take your physics, um, take your English, and so you would be able to start on track. But yeah, it's a lot to get through in two semesters for sure. Great. Thank you for that, Cheryl. No problem. Uh, our next question is for Rowan. And it's about managing work-life balance. So our students wondering how you keep your balance between work and having fun and all the other fun social things. How do you keep from everything piling up? Yeah, so to, just to clarify, I assume the workload, the work is not related to the work term, it's school-wise workload? Uh, yeah, I think this is more related to when you're in an academic term, but I'm sure there's probably a work-life balance when you're on work term as well, so it might be helpful to touch on that too. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'll start with school first I'm in an academic semester. Um, the big thing is I'm going to tie back to what I said about kind of scheduling your, I'll call it like your entire semester. So if you use school calendars or whatever planning option you want to go for, um, it honestly just kind of boils down to how much time you think you need to dedicate to stuff. Um, and I know for me, when I first started engineering, um, my first few weeks, I definitely had a limited social life because I didn't know what to expect from any tests. Everyone I talked to was like, it's super hard, like make sure you study super hard. Um, so it took me a few weeks to get into the what the expectations were, how much I had to study for each test, how much assignments would take me in terms of like hours. Um, and once I kind of got that figured out, um, all, almost all my nights became free, um, so to an extent, besides if I get an assignment due the next day or a test the next day outside of those kind of special circumstances, um, if you're able to use that time between classes, you're able to get assignments done, if you can study in between those class breaks, because you're not nine to five all day, there's definitely a good few hours in there that you're free, so I'd prioritize doing as much work as you can during those periods. Um, and then also, if you're just managing your time and knowing how long things should take you, um, you're able to kind of shift when you want to do those things and 
either for your night, for your mornings, have a weekend day for your the full weekend. Um, but I know a lot of people treat it like a nine to five job sometimes and take the entire weekend off. If you're if you're really disciplined like that, you can do it. But I know I'm personally not, so I have to work a little bit more on the weekends. But again, it all comes down to who the person is. Some people, I have people in my class who do nothing on the weekends. And I have myself who takes a full weekend day sometimes just because I can't prioritize that much time focusing to a full week. That's fair. Something yeah. different for everybody, really, an individual approach. Yeah. And in terms of work, um, I don't think there's many jobs that are outside of a nine to five. Um, so you're kind of basically free as a normal nine to five job would be. Or if you're on rotation somewhere up at site, you're either on for two weeks and you're off for a full week. So. The balance is kind of just associated to a classic job, so it's not too much to explain there. Makes sense. Fair enough. All right. And our next question, um, perhaps both of you folks may weigh on weigh in on this one. Um, how can I be successful in this program? <laughs> um. Well, I haven't been a student in the program, but for what I can see, um, it is a lot of being organized. Um, like Rowan said, it's really important to stay on top of your deadlines um, to, you know, get a schedule in place that works for you um, to make sure that you have enough time for class plus your studies and your assignments. Um, we have lots of help available on campus. Well, right now it's online, um, but it's still available even though we're in a remote learning opportunity. Um, things like our Student Success Center. So we have tutors that are there to help you with any of your, well, except for English, they will help you with the 10 other courses um, that are offered in Engineering 1. And so they're there six days a week to help. And we also have a student instruction leadership program and so they're called the SIs and they are actually engineering students who we hire on a work term and they attend the first year engineering classes, well the four engineering specifically, and then they offer sessions that would help a student to be successful in those courses. So they don't tutor and um, like you can't bring their question, your questions to them like you do with the tutors in the Success Center, but they do try and um, support you through the work that is being done in your classes. So lots of help and lots of support on campus to help you be successful. Now Rowan might have some other uh, things to add to that as a student. Yeah, absolutely. Just, I, you broke up a little bit when you were asking the question. Was the question just what resources are available on campus to help students with this work? Yeah, how do I be successful in the program is essentially what the question. Okay, okay, so I'll, that is two roots. So I would agree, Cheryl said this Engineering Health Center is like by far one of the best resources. Um, but I found, especially for me in chemistry and specifically the second physics course you take, um, some of the stuff that's touched in there is actually easier to go to the chemistry and physics help centers. I honestly didn't do that when it was a pandemic. Um, I would imagine they're still able to do those virtually, um, but I found for some of those like harder physics and chemistry questions that maybe the engineering uh, tutors didn't know that those resources were also even better for some other courses. Um, and then I would say, again, this is can be a little bit difficult with online courses, but in your first year, you put into groups uh, for certain activities anyway. Um, so I would say like, Asking your friends is also a really great resource too. Um, it's not one that is like, I guess, not like a faculty organized thing, it's just kind of organic. Um, working with friends, if you're studying for a test and you do something and then they start talking about something you didn't even know about, um, you're like, oh, darn, I really got to learn that really quick. Um, and that's how I've caught some things. Like I've been studying, um, it was like five or six hours before a test, my friend bought this entire new chapter that I just clearly did not get from the prof that I was supposed to learn. Um, I ended up learning it in that time, and because of that friend, I was able to answer a question on the test that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to. Um, so, like Sarah said, Engineering Health Center is unreal. It's super awesome. There's also the faculty-specific health centers for chemistry and physics that I went to, and then also just having a good small group of friends I find to study with. It allows you to bounce ideas off, solve problems quicker, and kind of put brains together. It's good. Yeah, so it sounds like really leaning on each other for support and also being 
um, super engaged and able to reach out when you need help from those help support centers as well. Uh, not just even within engineering, but across the campus is our main main goals there. Awesome. All right. So we have another question there. Just to reminder to folks who may have joined us halfway through, we're using the Q and A to all panelists function within WebEx for submitting questions. So we have a student um, who is mentioning that academic term three has three semesters. Can students take courses in the May, August intercession semesters? Um, so term three actually is only offered in the fall. And so in the second year of engineering, you would do term three. Then in the winter semester, you would go on work term. And then that following spring semester, which is part of your second year, um, you would actually be in term four. So um, because term, your the spring semester, you're right, has three um, sessions. So spring runs for the full 14 weeks. Um, intercession is the first one. I couldn't remember which one was first. Intercession starts the same as spring, but it only runs um, for six weeks. And that basically is an abbreviated semester where everything's sort of offered in double time. So you're still taking the same amount of academic um, information, but in that short period. And the summer sem semester is the same, It's but it starts halfway through spring and ends at the same time as the spring semester. So engineering itself does not offer courses in intercession or in summer because basically you would be taking six classes a week instead of three um, for one um, course as well as two labs. So it's too much to offer um, engineering information during those sessions. So in, in the spring semester, like say of engineering one or term three, uh, sorry, term four is offered in spring, you would be in class for the entire spring semester, which is the 14 weeks. So 12 weeks of classes and then your exams. Thanks for that, Cheryl. No problem. Our next question is about how competitive the various disciplines within engineering are. So specifically, they're wondering how competitive it is to major in computer engineering. So uh, computer engineering is usually within our top four, um, but we do have what we call a promotion average. So engineering students come in and they take their first year courses, which is, like I said, 11 courses. Nine of those courses are used in what's called your promotion average. So we, you have to pass the math 1000 and you have to pass the physics 1050, but we don't use those grades in what we call your promotion average. So we're using the other nine, which would be your chemistry, um, your second math and your math 2050, your English, the four engineering, and your second physics, physics 1051. So your promotion average, if your promotion average is a 75% or better, then you are guaranteed to get your first choice in major. So, I mean, each of those classes do have a cap on the size, but if everybody wanted the same major and they had over 75%, then we have no choice but to offer it to everyone. But that's not usually the case because we do have six majors and everybody seems to want something different. Um, so mechanical typically is our biggest class and our most popular class. Um, electrical and computer um, usually fall within the top four, but our smaller classes than mechanical and civil as well as in the top four. And then ocean and naval um, and process tend to not be everyone's first choice because they are very specialized programs. And uh, so they're usually smaller classes, but we have seen them in the top four in the past. So it really varies year to year with how students do and how their grades are. But like I said, if you get a 75% or better in your promotion average, you are guaranteed to get your first choice in major. Great, thank you. And uh, one of our probably last questions here is for Rowan, um, and it's about your first year. If you could have done anything differently in that first year when you came on campus, what would that have been and why? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Give me a second to think it. Um, feel, this feels like an interview question. Um, <laughs> um, so I think my big thing definitely would be uh, my first semester that I did. Um, I came out of high school as probably the majority of engineering students do. I know it's not the general wide case that most of the courses in high school, even if they were considered the hard courses, weren't really that difficult to you. The amount of work was a lot less significant um, than like what engineering turns into. Um, so my study habits honestly just weren't at all where they needed to be, which is kind of the most common theme I hear from everybody. Um, so I remember my first midterm ever, I got a 65%, uh, which was really off for me because I was normally getting 90 to 95 in high school. So my first assessment ever was a huge blow to my ego. Um, but it also taught me a whole lot really quickly. Um, so for me, maybe it's not a full first year thing, um, but would be to really like over study the entire, like the first test, especially like the first big thing you have. Um, because I find if you can start to wrap your head around what's going to be covered on one of them, you understand the amount of work it's going to take to do the the following um, assessments. Um, and I only I put in a insignificant amount of time that I should have for that first test, and it it bit me in the butt. Um, so that would be the first thing I would change. And then secondly, I didn't even know what Google Calendar was in the first year. Um, so if I had someone to even tell me that, or just to like use something similar, um, I would have done that in a heartbeat. Sounds like some really good advice. Now these folks are already ahead of the game. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, folks, do you have any last advice or key tips that you'd like to share with our prospective students? So I'll say a couple things and then I'll pass it over to Rowan. So, I mean, from what I can see as an advisor, um, with engineering, you really need to hit the ground running. So it's not like high school um, where you kind of ease into your studies and uh, you have a little bit of time to kind of waste time at the beginning. Engineering is um, a pretty heavy load academically. Um, students really enjoy it. I have to say um, I wish I had known more about it as a student and I say that all the time because it, um, it's such a hands-on program even though it is an academic program. Um, it is such a hands-on program. It's very interesting. You're always faced with new challenges. But like I said, I mean, hit the ground running. Um, don't slack off in the beginning because it's very hard to catch up um, when you're further in the semester. Uh, reach out for help. We're, we have a great team to help you with the Student Success Center, the student instruction leaders, um, myself as an advisor, and the undergraduate office in general. Uh, we're all here to support you. We want to see you succeed, and we will do everything we can to help you succeed. You just have to reach out because we can't, um, especially in this remote learning environment. Obviously, we don't see students in the hall this year, so we don't know who's suffering or who needs help. So uh, reach out to any of us. We are all here to help, and we will all do everything we can to, to help you be successful. Yeah, um, I think the few things I would end with um, are, in just from my experience, my first semester, I got a, I was trying to get my head around the entire program of engineering, and like Cheryl said, really starting the ground running, which I didn't do. I started it more of a crawl, um, which was an absolute mistake. So that is definitely the big one. Um, but I will say, once I got into the swing of things, and I'm a, there's. I wouldn't take this as like the you must do this, um, but the big thing with engineering I find is the work terms you get. Um, like looking back through my program, kind of reflecting, um, I would be really scared if I hadn't had a work term yet and I was graduating in four months. Um, and the easiest way to get a work term is by having some sort of relatable experience. Um, and the best way to do that is through extracurricular activities. Um, and I find MUN is really, really good for that, where a lot of other schools, it's much more of a, if you want to like be on a team, you have to apply, whereas MUN's much more accepting of everybody. Um, and there's almost something for everyone in the engineering program and even other faculty that you can join. So if you're interested in like um, societal impacts and creating a better change for the world, there's engineers without borders at MUN. Um, 
I was on two of the main teams, which was the Hyperloop team, basically building electric vehicles that go in a near vacuum environment that go, what, 500 kilometers an hour. Um, there's teams that build uh, essentially a smaller version of like off-road vehicles um, to race and track in the U.S. Obviously not traveling the U.S. right now, but soon to be hopefully for those teams. Um, there's the Student Society, which I was on. And to be in all honesty, the the grades I got in the first year are super important to get to my promotion. And of course, you want to do good all the time. But I haven't been asked for my – I've had like a single bullet point of like my average on my resume for the past two years, and I haven't been asked for an official transcript. So I wouldn't take – if you get like a 70 or 75 in a course and all your other courses are 80 or 90, don't sweat that course because everything that you're going to do in the workplace is going to be much more relevant to the things you do outside of school. Um, so if you have the time and you feel like you have the ability to focus on something else more than just school, I would do your best to try and get involved with whatever that would be because that's definitely where the value comes in. Awesome. So that's great advice for our future students. Thanks so much for joining us, Cheryl and Rowan. Um, folks, that's pr pretty much it for us today. Uh, but if you'd like to keep connected with us, you certainly can email admissions at mun.ca with any questions you may not have gotten answered today with our session, or if you are thinking of anything later on. There's also a place where you can stay connected with us on our website, mun.ca slash undergrad. And if you have any questions for our next session with HKR, it'll be on Thursday at 4 p.m. Newfoundland time if you'd like to check that session out as well. All right. Bye, folks. Thanks for joining us. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thank you, Joan. Yeah.